And there we go. Uh, commentators, please go ahead and introduce the teams. All right. Hi again. This is Kill2 here with Angel Hunt. We have another awesome Alliance tournament match coming for you guys. This time we have uh, Bane versus Unaffiliated. Uh, Bane's going to be on your left. They've brought a Balgorn, uh, the first one of those we've seen in the tournament, two Tempests, one Oneros, one Curse, two Sabres, and two Wolves. And from the unaffiliated team, we see a Rook, Tengu, Drake, Nighthawk, Thrasher, Basilisk, two more Drakes, and an additional Thrasher. So it looks like another uh, heavy missile team versus a mostly Matari team. It should be really interesting to see how much damage is going to come out of those Tempests. Yeah, I'm thinking quite a bit. Uh, we're off to the races already, although in the other direction, this curse for Bane taking a ton of damage right away. Uh, missiles not taking long to start doing their work, and not too much damage coming out of this Bane team. Um, we saw the armor bots come out of uh, the Tempest and the Balgorn, um, and you know obviously all all the gun slots used on those Tempest, but so far not doing a whole lot. Thrasher taking some damage on unaffiliated side, but Bane side looking pretty bad so far. It looks like the uh, wolf for. Uh, the Bane side is about to go down uh, as well as the Curse. The Curse goes down first and then the Wolf uh, could possibly be their FC as well. Uh, this could be a major disaster for Bane. Uh, not much damage going out towards the unaffiliated team. One Thrasher seems to have gone down so far, but that doesn't, ha doesn't seem to be really a linchpin for that team. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's holding back all the DPS. I don't see... Um... I'm looking for dampeners on the drakes. We've seen a lot of that in the past. I don't, I don't see any. Um, we're seeing cap transfer between the drakes and the basilisk, which is pretty lucky considering they have this Balgorn, which will absolutely nuke the uh, the cap on that basilisk right away. But um, other than the rook, I don't know what's keeping the damage down for this uh, uh, Bane team. And well, there goes that rook. So maybe now we'll see things open up a little bit. Now uh, just the Tengu, three Drakes, a Basilisk, and a Nighthawk left uh, for unaffiliated. And still most of the Bane team intact. Uh, for those asking, the Balgorn is not a flagship. And that rook just got obliterated for the unaffiliated team faster than a blink of an eye. It just went down. Uh, it looks like the Saber also for the... Bane team has also gone down. Um, so it looks like damage is pretty evenly spread. Somehow that wolf managed to pull out and survive. Uh, that Onir is doing a great job of saving him. Um, one of the Tempests for Bane now approaching uh, roughly 40% shield. Um, not much damage at all going on against the the unaffiliated team. Although the Basilisk does seem to be ticking away slowly in shields. Yeah, that, that shield damage the Basilisk is taking is actually really significant. I mean, you know, he'll go down immediately once those shields are gone. And after that, the rest of the team might go quick. There goes that Basilisk down right away as soon as he hit armor. So even though this Bane Tempest is at about half armor, um, he is armor tanked. It's not going to go away super fast. And now they can open up on those um, Drakes and the rest of that uh, unaffiliated team without anything standing in their way, really. So uh, still anyone's game right now. Yeah, it looks like this match may turn around yet. Um, we're seeing a lot of damage now being put on the unaffiliated Drake. Um, not a whole lot of repping going on from uh, to the Tempest. Um, it's slowly, slowly dripping away deep into armor right now. Not a lot of E-War at all left on the field other than the Bogorn with its newts. Well, probably newts. And seeing that... Uh... Tempest run a smart bomb. Looks like he um, is trying to smart bomb the drones off of the Balgorn, which he just succeeded in doing uh, to some extent. A lot of his own drones taking damage too. There goes a Drake though. So still all the battleships and the Oneros hanging in there for um, the Bane team while Unaffiliated's getting pretty slim on DPS. If they lose another uh, ship or two, they're going to be in real bad shape. I, I kind of like uh, where Bane's going now. Yeah, without if they lose, uh, especially that Nighthawk or the Tengu, uh, there may not be enough damage anymore to break this uh, rep this rep chain. Uh, the Oneros seems to be able to hold the Tempest right now at low low army at 20%. Um, one more one more Drake down. I don't think there's enough damage to kill them. Uh, both wolves are still alive for the Bane team. Going to see if I can get a good shot of those. Yeah, I think I think Bane's gonna have this. That Drake, second Drake, now going down for unaffiliated, leaving them with just a Nighthawk, a Tengu, and one more Drake. And at this point, it's just too much. It's kind of 
Uh, interesting. I think the Balgorn probably couldn't have come up against a worse setup. You know, you you would like to deal with something that you can make use of the webs or something you can make use of the the cap um, destabilizing, which the Balgorn's so good at. Uh, and it did against the Basilisk, but at this point, um, Drake still tank okay. It feels to me like this Bane team's so light on damage uh, for some reason. It does, and I mean, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering, uh, A, there's no E-War on the field anymore once the unaffiliated Rook got exploded, um, and those Tempests really should be able to dish out a ton of damage on the slow-moving Drake, uh, but the Alpha just doesn't seem to be there. Yeah, it's weird. It's like if you have a setup like unaffiliated setup where you have both a Rook and a Basilisk, it seems like your tank should be built around those two ships. You've got remote repping, uh, probably a little bit of resist mods going on on the battle cruisers, and then uh, you know a little E-War protection. But the way it looks right now, with how much, uh, how long it's taking to kill these drakes, either the drakes have like a significant tank outside of those two ships, which may be the case since the armor. I mean, they really go down fast once the shields are gone, even though that would probably happen anyway. Or the other. You know, possibility that the Bane DPS is just terrible, which seems weird considering they've got two Tempests there. I don't know what those would be there for if not to put out at least, you know, a fairly significant amount of damage. Even though they can't, they can't get anywhere near like the, a full Battlecruiser team amount of damage. I, I guess. Well, I mean, they do have those two utility high slots, and we've seen one at least being used for a uh, for a smart bomb. So they could be energy transfer. Uh, but that still leaves six uh, high slots for huge damage um, from those arties or even uh, autocans, but uh, they do appear to be using arties right now. Um, that Tengu getting crushed for unaffiliated, and right now, and right now, uh, we're seeing the last unaffiliated ship start to get shot. And the Nighthawk is ready to go down. It looks like they're switching targets and ready to go. Yeah, they uh, pulled back all the armor on that Tempest, everything's A-OK -okay at this point for Bane. Kind of a squeak by win, that was really in the balance for a minute. I mean, if they lost that Tempest, or if they weren't able to get that Rook down for a little longer, I think uh, this would have been broken up pretty easily by um, the unaffiliated team. So, uh, you know, this is kind of one of the closer matches we've seen, even though it's a bit slow-paced. Uh, at this point, it's it's not really, you know, much to it anymore, but... It might take a little while since that Nighthawk looks like he's quite a ways away. Uh, the Wolves will go get him, I guess, but um, it, he'll be tanked too. I, I still think it's weird that they have such big buffers going on on these Kaldari ships, even with the Basilisk on the field. I guess you would want some buffer, but it just seems like a weird setup. It does seem like an interesting setup. I mean, having a, having a buffer just gives you more time for that Basilisk to get on you and get an extra rep or cycle or two. But it's really interesting to see how important good target calling is in the, at this point. Um, without that Rook going just exploding, um, I don't believe Bane would have been able to pull this off because Unaffiliated really controlled the field before they switched targets. So props to the Bane FC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they definitely did what they needed to, which is which is really important. I mean, they I think they could have made a different decision or even just had some worse luck and not gotten through this match. But I don't know. I'm still. This is just kind of a weird match to me. It's like I'm really curious about how much damage this Bane team would do against a different type of setup, and I'm curious about how you know the unaffiliated team would have done against a different kind of setup. I, I like this. I mean, it's cool to see. Balgorn and the Tempest on the field, that's definitely something a little out of the ordinary, so hopefully hopefully they can you know, keep doing well with, with weird stuff like that. It's always exciting to see Tempest. Yeah, I love seeing Tempest. They're a great ship. They look like a deadly shark just ready to obliterate everything else, especially with artil artilleries now. Um, it's a big change from the last, last Alliance tournament. Uh, the artillery is doing a huge amount of damage, so it's really impressive, and that Nighthawk is about to go down, the Nighthawk is down, and Bane holds the field against unaffiliated. And back Very to nice the and entertaining. Wave. Nice and entertaining match there. Uh, Bane taking unaffiliated. Uh, next match is Majesta Empire and Beyond Virginity in their first match.